Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second ever dev chat. Uh, I am Azad Balabanian, the puzzle maker, and with me today is uh, Pierre Marie, who is the audio designer. Hello, Pierre. Yes, so I'm, I'm Pierre Marie Blin, the, the audio designer of Puzzling Places. Yeah. Yeah, so. I think week by week or dev chat by dev chat, you'll be able to see more and more people uh, that are working on this game, Puzzling Places. And so this time around, um, we're going to be focusing on the Mars Desert Research Station. And uh, yeah, the left, le last dev chat was about the first ever update that we pushed. So if you haven't watched that, please uh, check out our YouTube channel. You can see it there. Uh, today's dev chat is going to be a multimedia experience. I, I'm really excited about it because it's going to involve like videos, uh, be behind the scene videos, um, playing from the site of the puzzles that were, you know, 3D scanned. Uh, we also have, yeah, Pierre Marie, who's going to be walking us through the audio itself. And um, uh, so, yeah, you, this is a really good way of being able to um, get, get a little bit of a like background about how this game is built. Uh, Pure Mary, we, I'm, we're also hearing the Discord notifications from your end. Maybe there's uh, yeah. the, yeah. the streamer mode thing would be good to uh, enable there. But no worries. Uh, let's get on with the dev chat today. So, yeah, basically, if you by, if you're also watching this later on YouTube, we're also going to have chapter marks. So feel free to to check out those, and you'll be able to skip them. But I recommend watching every single thing that we have here. <laughs> uh, one more thing, if you are watching this live in Discord, use the event chat, um, the event chat, uh, whatever, the channel to be able to uh, ask questions. And if we have time at the end, uh, then we'll be doing a, a Q&A. So let's start with some time-lapse videos of the actual um, the, the Mars Desert Research Station itself. So this all starts by flying into Grand Junction, Colorado. So this Mars Desert Research Station is a real place on, on Earth. It's not actually on Mars, it's on Earth. It's a Martian colony simulator. And uh, it's built by the Mars Society as a place for people to go and to train and to sort of be able to simulate what Martian conditions would be like to live, uh, to live on, to experiment on. So that's the plane landing on the, uh, the border between Colorado and Utah. And then you take a you take a car and you just drive. You drive for hours and hours and hours. And you see going from like a much greener uh, part of America into a true desert. So things are getting flatter and flatter. Uh, hills start to become uh, basically yeah, just plains and then plateaus start to really rise. Um, yeah, I mean, here I'm just gonna keep going through a few of these videos. Uh, Truly, really, if you've seen some of these like great Western films, you know, like Cowboys and whatnot, uh, this these the, these are the locations where they were filmed. Uh, and so, it, to me, uh, so yeah, this, these are actually my videos. I went to the Mars Desert Research Station in 2018 um, as a project that I did for them to scan their station uh, so that they can create a VR experience. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And so. So, yeah, we drove this car um, through the desert, and this is the entrance into the, the compound, essentially. The MBRS has this massive, extensive uh, uh, area that they own, and so it, this is all used to do the, the experiments. So the people actually go there. A lot of universities um, and engineers go there and build rovers, like proper sort of Martian-looking all-terrain rovers, and they do their, their terrain testing here. Um, so this is this is what it takes to actually get to the station. You can tell how like isolated it is from everything else. So here here it is um, as you pull up next to it. And so now we're switching switching from uh, the time lapse videos to drone videos here. And this is this just goes to show you a little bit of the the surrounding. I mean, it's truly truly this alien looking place. Um, let me double check. Oh, the, we're also recording. Okay, we are recording. Good. <laughs> it's always good to know. Um, so the it's 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 sort of situated on this basin. Um, I mean, I don't know what the history, the geographical history is, but maybe it used to have water there. I, I don't know. I mean, it's you know you can imagine millions of years ago. It's kind of like Mars. There, there might have been like a massive lake here. 
Uh, you can also see these layers on the, uh, the, the, the plateaus and the mountains next to it. So another shot here is you can really see this like, I don't even know what to call this this area, but it's just it looks like like a cake, like a top like layered <laughs> Martian cake. And so there's like this volcano. It looks like Olympic Olympus Mons, like the massive volcano on Mars. <laughs> I don't know. It, by the way, this isn't open to the public. You should know you have to sort of book these uh, expeditions with the Mars Society themselves. They they actually do host sort of public events where people can go. Um, but yeah, this was uh, just just a scanning project. So, so you mean as a, the, the the area is private, or mm -hmm. it's just like it's too dangerous for people to go there on their own? Well, it's not easy to get to. You do need to like you know, if you go with a not a four wheel drive car, you might get stuck in the sand or something. Uh, but it yeah. it is a private property land. The Mars Society that owns it and built it is a non profit, and they do like their main mission is to essentially inspire people and also um get the get the ball rolling essentially on on martian colonization um it's run by like you know engineers and scientists that really mm -hmm. are into astronomy and, and mars and so to them this is um yeah this is this is their passion uh mads 90901 is asking are you making this game as a full-time job yes uh there are five full-time uh, people on the on the team, on the Realities IO Puzzling Places team. Uh, Pierre Marie is working full uh, part time with us. Uh, I believe you're also working on a few other experiences. Most of your yeah. experiences, uh, but yeah, for most of us, this is a full time gig. We're just we're just making puzzles. That's <laughs> that's what we're doing here. Uh, this last shot here I wanted to show is uh, just how windy it can be. Um, moving on, so now we're getting into the, the photogrammetry processing, uh, for photogrammetry capturing process. And so this is me walking around the uh, the hab. I don't know if you guys have all played the puzzle yet, uh, the, but this is the habitat, which is where the astronauts like live and work and whatnot. And the way that the photogrammetry here is done, it's a combination of a of cameras and lasers. And so while I'm 3D scanning um, the, the sort of living room kitchen area, I'm also laser scanning inside of the bedrooms. Uh, we decided not to have the bedrooms be part of the puzzle just because they, were, they would actually get quite um, complicated. And so we, we were like, okay, let's, let, we had to really actually make a lot of editorial decisions about what we wanted to have as puzzles and whatnot. And perhaps you might even see some deleted, uh, deleted puzzles here, um, some, some footage of puzzles that just did not make it. Um, so yeah, this is a lot of painstaking work. You basically take a camera and you have to go one by one by one by one and just take thousands and thousands of photographs of every single square inch around the, the, the area that you want to scan. Um, and we'll also show you the, three, the 3D processing part of it after this. Yes, see, as I, 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 so I know really little about photogrammetry myself, so mm -hmm. I thought this would be done with drones inside. Like. Ah. But no, so you have to move the camera every 15 centimeters yes. I yourself. Mean, I would crazy. love to have drones fly inside and just like, f you know, fly themselves and 3D scan it, because then I can just sit down and watch my drones do the thing, similar to how it happens outside. But interior, is, yeah. it's still a lot of... Um, just walking around and doing it by hand. And actually, the, I want to go back to this this part. This this part was actually very difficult to do with the uh, the the tripod. I had to like adjust the legs every time I moved moved down because some sometimes they were like a little bit off. And uh, the one of the important things here is to have each photo be extremely sharp. And because you're inside, because you don't have so much light, uh, for it to be really sharp, you need to use a tripod, which means each shot is like one second long. And, it, and so this whole area to scan probably took a, like at least a few hours. Oh, by the way, this is in the middle of the of, of summer. This we went here in July, and you're, if you're in this, <laughs> if you're in the desert in July, like you know, it's it's incredibly hot. Um, so <laughs> I, I did, by the way, get heat stroke at the end of this <laughs> this <laughs> project. <laughs> Uh, it happened in the RAM, uh, in the RAM puzzle, like it's this metal, you know, shell area and everything gets so hot in there. Uh, so yeah, this is the downstairs area of the hab. 
Um, let's keep going. This is the, the sleeping quarters uh, that we didn't include in the puzzle. Um, so this is next to the kitchen. And so th this was actually very tough to scan because it's so space constrained and you're like having to move in this tiny, tiny corner. Wow. This is another puzzle that uh, didn't make it, basically. This is a green green lab, and uh, this is where you can grow grow things. Um, yeah, I, uh, th there's a number of reasons why this one didn't make it, but part of it was like, as you'll see later in this uh, dev chat, the amount of work that we actually have to put into cleaning up the 3D scans that we do. So um, you, you'll see that in a little bit. The other thing that Alt didn't make it is that the walkways, every single walkway between the modules of the MDRS were all 3D scanned. And so this is me walking and sort of doing this zigzag maneuver pattern and, and, and scanning the walkways. Uh, it didn't make it because it's just extremely difficult to have everything line up correctly. And so sometimes the walkways would be sticking out of the, the the outside scan, you know, the inside of the walkway is scanned, the outside of is scanned with drones, and sometimes they didn't line up, and so that, that created a lot of problems. Um, so we decided to sort of fill it in there. Um, and I, I guess yeah. need to be quite fast as well, right? Because of the, the change in, in the light, right? Yeah. So you can't, you can't do that at your own pacing, you need to yeah to go quite fast the shadow yeah i mean maybe throughout yeah. this uh, let me see if throughout the even here you let me scroll back and forth on the video you can actually see the shadow moving you see right there yeah, yeah so that um you know you try to be as quick as you can oh look there's a lizard there's a lizard <laughs> ah, that's so cute <laughs> that's like the only that's the only living thing actually around it was like these lizards that would show up um so the lighting, you're right. So you do have to ca capture places quickly, especially if there's shadows, because if you scan this area now and then you scan it again an hour later, the shadow would have moved and then basically the colors of that scan will not really be consistent. Um, sometimes you just have to do it. Sometimes, you know, you have no choice, but you try to be as quick as you can. And so most of this, the interior and the surroundings were all captured by on foot. Um, then, um, oh yeah, this is the the the, ha the hab module from the outside. Um, if you play the, of course, the MDRS pack, the external. Um, uh, I mean, you, this is this will all look very familiar to you for the external MDRS puzzle. <laughs> Uh, then comes the drone. So yeah, thankfully we don't have to do everything by on foot, especially when it's outside. Uh, I launched uh, a drone and I was manually scanning each each and every module. Uh, we also had a second drone operator that was scanning the entirety of the the, the premises. Um, that was quite an effort, actually. Thankfully, I didn't have to do that, but it was it was really quite a quite an achievement. Uh, this is the RAM. You might also be familiar with it from the uh, from the puzzle. Here, I was truly dying of heat. I mean, it was so hot. I was also just chugging waters like back and forth, and uh, it it was it was getting extremely hot. Uh, this is another puzzle that didn't make it. I mean, listen, guys, there's only four. We can only put up maybe four or five puzzles, uh, and we have to make editorial decisions as to what we can keep. But uh, who knows? Maybe in the maybe even the future we can put out less polished puzzles. I don't know. We we want things to look good and to feel good, so we don't want to put out things that aren't as polished. And finally, yeah, yeah so Pierre Marie. No, I was just saying that for sure. The 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 pacing of the whole team, that the the amount of work that gets put in in those DLC plus all the other features that we're trying to add down to the game to make it better and. The feedbacks we're taking into account, that's so much work for just a small team of yeah, five full-time people plus me part-time. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and with all these puzzles being four difficulties also on top, so you, you multiply it by four, so it's 16 puzzles in this last DLC. Yes. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. The, the Every puzzle has to work in 400-piece mode, which means the quality has to be quite high. And then also the audio that you're you're creating and mapping like has to be applied to for five, every five, all five versions of each puzzle. So yeah, you're right. It's 16, 16 puzzles or it's four. 
Is it five difficulties or four difficulties? Well, it's five, actually. Five. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, so is it's, it 20, five? it's five. 25, 50, 100, 200, 400. Yes, actually, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's 20 puzzles. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because, for example, for the audio, the audio, I, I, so I can't approach them from scratch when I'm doing it for 25 pieces or 400 pieces, but yet some parts are uh, adjusted so that it's not too messy on the small 25 pieces when you have m many sounds playing on top of each other. Yes. So yeah, they, 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 they require quite different approaches. So um, now I want to show you all what the photogrammetry itself looks like. So this is, you know, we took all those photos and what happens? So then you put them into a photogrammetry software. And in, in this case, we're using reality capture and all these, all these, uh, basically squares that you see fly, floating above the area. These are where all the pictures were taken from. So in this case, there are 1,400 photos. And sorry for the video kind of juddering back and forth. This is just sometimes Discord's uh, video uh, streaming thing is, is like this. But uh, you can tell. So that actually, we, we scanned quite a large area. And um, for the sake of keeping the puzzle very interesting, we decided to keep only the uh this area around so that, that's also another thing that we have to editorially we, we have to kind of decide is how do we want the puzzle to be shaped how many uh part of what goes into that is um how many how, how many how many pieces do we want each thing of the scan to to have so the the hab here we wanted to have the a lot of pieces but we also wanted to keep a little bit of the the, the sand around it and so i think at the end it's like a 50 50 split between the 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 ground versus the hab but if we had you know decided to do a much larger crop let's say something like this big then the hab would have only been like 10 pieces out of 100 um so that that's sort of a the decision we really need to make and so that that also meant we didn't include some things like there's a, there's a solar panel here and there's even a second um, observatory. This is a robotic observatory here. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you all have seen anything like this before, but this is how every single puzzle gets made. It's photos on the ground, photos with drones. Uh, I mean, not always it's both, but sometimes it's both. Uh, and then they get thrown into this software and like I mean, actually, let's go to the next step. The next step is, great, now you have a 3D scan. How does a 3D scan look? Uh, well, in fact, the 3D scan needs a lot of cleanup. Um, let's, let me load. Uh, I guess I have to switch the thing that I'm streaming. G give me a moment. Blender. Boom. Okay. So, um, this is the final puzzle that we saw with, uh, with the external. And also, by the way, this is what Pierre Marie is also going to be diving in deeper about and showing you how he created the audio. So, um, uh, ah, this is actually not the final. Great, this is the uh, the uncleaned up version of the of the scan. So this is not fully raw, but like this is what we had to work with. Um, as you can tell, if we if we shipped a puzzle that was like this, you can imagine that it's going. It was going to have quite a lot of very problematic pieces. Let's let's look underneath here. I mean, when the drone doesn't see things, right? When you're when you're scanning a place, if it doesn't, if there's no information that it was captured on site, then it cannot generate information. So um, there's quite a lot of things that we fixed. Uh, as you can tell, this was qu quite a mess because it's, it's translucent. And if it's translucent, then there are some things that get you know pulled into the 3D scan and some things that don't. Uh, what else? Actually, uh, the Daniel Kraft, uh, who also works with me on, on um, cleaning up these puzzles, uh, we, like, we remodeled these beams <laughs> um, to make them really clean. Uh, here, uh, yeah, I mean, every, all these walkways were just like such a nightmare. We'd also do little things like this where sometimes this is actually what Pierre Mir, you were talking about with the, with the timing and the light changing. If, if, if you scan it over a period of time here, you can see there's like double shadows or like ghosting within the shadows. Uh, we don't like this. So we have to specifically go in. We actually take the photos that were captured and then we like use Photoshop and we try to project the correct colors back onto the, the scan. Um, yeah, we got rid of the ghosting around the, the corners there. 
I mean, quite a lot of work. Um, this was actually fully remodeled. This uh, oil, uh, this diesel tanker. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll show one more thing. Let's go to the RAM. Is this in interesting, by the way, to people watching? Is this interesting to, to see? Let us know in the dev chat. If there's more things that we, we, we can dive into, yeah, please let us know. Um, so this is the final version of the RAM and let's go to the raw version nice glad to hear it sonar and grumpy very glad to hear it um so the raw version actually is is just the interior um it had the ceiling and everything fun fact about this puzzle this is actually a chinook uh, chinook is a helicopter this is a military helicopter that has two massive propellers on top this is the shell of a chinook that the ram was created in kind of a fun fact um here's what the raw raw scan looks like there's there's areas like this where there's just no information and it can really create for some bad, bad puzzle pieces. Uh, there's areas like this, which are just big blorbs of nothing. What do you do with that? Um, so we're literally painstakingly going through every square inch and centimeter and like cutting things, creating details, putting them back. So what did we do with this? I'll, I'll show you what the final version looks like. The final version is much cleaner. I wouldn't say it's perfect. It's not perfect by any means, but it's much cleaner. And so what we did here was actually sample some of the texture from here and here, use that as like the, you know, the, 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 the color and then added our own light gradient to match the lighting. Again, it's not perfect. It's not, a, it's not a scientific by any means, but at least it helps make the puzzle pieces much more pleasant. Here's another, here's another area. What did it look like before? Ah, it's a mess, you know, it's just the whole bunch of nothing and uh, we fix it and it's a much nice, it's much nicer. <laughs> uh, basically every single puzzle you've played, the thing, you wouldn't know how much work goes into it because if something looks fixed, it looks correct, but you wouldn't know that it didn't look correct before. And so it's sort of a thankless job because if you do it right, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's right. But then if you do it wrong, it's like, man, why is this puzzle piece so bad? And it's, it's sometimes we can't fix everything. I mean, there's, there's still quite a lot of things that we just cannot do, but, uh, we t at least try our best and we've, we've gone much better at being able to create good puzzle pieces. One last thing to also point out here is the fact that yeah, we combine it with the outside. So we combine the drone scan of the outside of the module with the ground and laser scan of the inside. And we create, we chopped off the roof so that we, it's much easier for you to be able to puzzle the insides, even without the see-through tool. Um, and it created this really cool diorama feel. Um, we were really going, going for uh, this diorama kind of idea. Um, Mr. Gaff is asking, what are some of the softwares and tools you use to do the cleanup? A lot of work gets done here on in Blender. Um, a lot of uh, the mesh work and the texture work. Um, and yeah, and we also wrote some of our own little tools. Um, we haven't really talked about them in the past, but yeah, photo, like I mentioned, Photoshop is one of them to be able to fix some of the colors. But yeah, this is a whole, this is the whole area that it's not very, there's not so many tools to be able to do it easily. And so we've had to really come up with our own workflows. <sighs> okay. I think, um, that should be uh, all from my side, unless I'm forgetting something important. Um, oh, hi Spence. <laughs> nice to see you in here. Um, uh, I guess, okay. Before Pierre we, we handed off to you to talk about the audio. Uh, should we show them a puzzle an unreleased puzzle? That that's that didn't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's definitely. Do it. All right, so let's go to the green lab. At least you you might have seen the uh, the the time lapse of me scanning it. But um, yeah, this is one of. I think at the end we had six or seven puzzles that we were considering releasing, or at least that we had to choose from. We knew we only wanted to at least four or five in. So this was one, one, of, one of them that got chopped. Uh, it's a very pretty looking place for sure. Um, it's quite interesting. 
Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have it, for it being a sort of a growing, you know, growing lab. It doesn't have much growing in it at the time of capture. Uh, so that was one of the reasons we we did decided not to to go with it. The other reason was also there was just quite a lot of cleanup that we need, that needed to happen. So here, yeah, you can tell there's a lot of uh, texture missing or like here here's here's some nightmarish stuff behind here. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a nightmare to, to, to have to fix. Uh, we also wanted to do the same thing here, which was combine it with the interior and the exterior. And so we would have to put the drone scan outside, uh, which which was fine. We can line it up pretty easily, but then um, chopping the roof and having things line up correctly. And, and it was quite difficult. And so again, given the time constraint and given that we're only five people, um, the very you know we have we have to make these editorial decisions about what we keep and what we can ship so hopefully you guys are have been happy with the, the our first dlc pack let us know if you played it and what you think about it so far um yeah it's it's our first one we're really excited about it it's also very different thematically than everything else that we've done which is i think also a perfect segue into how pierre marie approached um this topic about like how do you create a martian or marsh themed martian themed uh puzzle yeah, because actually it's Earth, so right. we could have made it Earth, but it's 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 the the the, the fact that with passing places there's so much things we can do, and we can actually pull it in different directions. So you have just a realistic experience of okay, I'm puzzling a real places. It's puzzling places. It's a real place. So let's have the sound of the real place. But actually, most of the time, what you get. Uh, in terms of audio is not the sound of the place at all like none of the 16 launch puzzles that were in the launch content I, i've never been there so I, I can only guess how it would sound yeah and then for some of them so as i did a few recordings like ambisonic recordings there and if we would just put that in the in the in the puzzle it wouldn't sound magical it wouldn't sound it wouldn't even sound like you would remember it sounded like because what you remember is always different from what it is actually right so you have something a bit more like dreamy a bit more magical a bit more mysterious and and manage to um, catch all the important element that really tells the story of the place and yeah so with mars we were like okay I think right from the start, I was like, no, 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 we, we're going to push people, like put them into orbit on Mars directly. And they will hear rockets flying by like kilometers away, thousands of kilometers away. Like you, you can see them pass through. You, you don't see them visually, but with how the sound is made, it, it doesn't attract. I, I, at least I try to make it so that it doesn't attract too much attention to itself so you don't want to turn your head and wh look where's the rocket you just know it's there you're on mars now so yeah uh, so that's some of the things we're trying now with puzzling places to 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 pull it towards a really completely immersive uh, virtual reality experience where it it's even more than just puzzling things it's mm. transporting you somewhere fully completely uh, visually and and with the sounds too um yeah so so that, that's the thing yeah I, i've never been to this place so i just can guess how it would sound so what happens generally is that at the beginning i ask uh, Azad to send me like a the full mesh so i can see it either on sketchfab or in unreal directly and then the, i just start it and look around see the the, the place get a sense of this, the scale, because we have so many different scales in puzzling places from the kimono, which is just like an object to Biarritz, which is like this gigantic um, sky view. And, and so I need to get a sense of the scale every time to know which perspective we need for the sound so that it, it kind of matches the visual. So let's say for the HAB, HAB is entirely interior puzzle. So you need to be put inside HAB somewhat, like in, in a version that you, you feel surrounded by the structure and the sounds feels like they're maybe like five meters away, 10 meters away. But for example, with the exterior one, it's 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 a much larger place. So it's, you will only hear stuff in the distance, very mm. faint. Um, yeah. Let's, let's see let's, it. I mean, you're, you're gonna give us a demonstration, right? 
Yeah, sure. So let me just start the scene in the background. So I will share my uh, the screen with the game running directly in Unreal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. So we are on the exterior puzzle, uh, now completely finished at 200 pieces. So it's, it's quite large. It's not the largest scale we can get with the 400, for example, but it's still, still quite large. So what I can do now is to, sh to show you the different layers we have in the audio system. Because there's actually a lot of different um, systems playing on top of each other so that you have a, like a, a full experience. Uh, also, just please note that the, now what you're hearing is mono because we couldn't figure out a way to stream uh, Unreal directly. So sorry, you won't get like the stereo left-right separation I can get now. You have to play the full oh. game for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so let's just start with what I usually start with when I design the puzzle. Um, I start with the air layer, what we call the air which is just that. So right now you can maybe hear like a, a really low rumbling wind. And every now and then, maybe every, yeah, now there's one, the rumbling. That's happening randomly every maybe 20, 60 seconds. It's, it's random. These are like earthquakes types of sounds like really low rumbling and on top of that is the, the the wind so you might have noticed that in all puzzles when you start the puzzle they all start with the same layer of wind which is a very open air wind like like you're on a beach uh, dune like you hear the the wind in the the, the tall grass etc etc and for mars it was not working because you shouldn't feel like the atmosphere is the same as on earth so it should feel somewhat very empty like there's no like sound would not travel there because the, the atmosphere is so light so I made those really um, like I think Daniel in the team said it feels like uh, blowing in a microphone directly <laughs> which is kind of I guess like if you listen to the winds on Mars that they did record at the NASA it kind of sounds like that like just someone blowing on a microphone directly <laughs> it sounds really low and yeah weird so with that, you don't get any sense of perspective. It's very close. You don't get any sense that something is happening uh, in the distance uh, because actually sound would not travel properly there. So that's that's for the air track. Now, uh, and that air track, depending on the puzzle, sometimes um, modulates. So for example, in the first 10%, it's just a, a basic track. And then after 10%, as the puzzles start to come together for you, you start to switch crossfade slowly into a new new sound here for the exterior as we never leave that space like the the open desert it doesn't change but for example on the HAB I believe you start with the same sound the the, the Mars desert but maybe 12 percent in it so slowly start to crossfade into the HAB ambience so that's for the air track now I can show you the what we call the RFX so it means random SFX basically and these they are spawned all around all around the player uh, randomly so uh, generally it's it's almost 360 around me I try to every, like prevent sounds from spawning behind you because it, actually it's not very comfortable to have sounds spawning behind you like for example when you play sitting because you feel like someone is talking right behind your head which, <laughs> which is not that great so yeah I try to focus them into like that first forward plane 180 degrees and within those RFX you will hear like recordings like sands sands being blown away by the winds you will hear those drones um, what else you have the rockets I don't know if we will hear one because I, I can't really control when they play it's completely random and uh, yeah it's hard to showcase sound because, like, especially on passing paces, because you, you're supposed to stay like an hour in the puzzle. <laughs> but yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, what nice. else? Like, all these RFX are also uh, clocked to the global progression of the puzzle. So I can decide at 0% what happens, at 1%, 2%, etc. So, for example, 
I often try to have something happening right on the first connection. So when you connect to the first two pieces, you'll get a sound in the ambience around you that sells you the environment. Mm. Um, and then after maybe 20%, I will start to have some tonal content. So those drones coming in, like we hear just one now, very low. Maybe 10% later, I will have a second drone with a different texture playing in. And on the exterior, I think at around 50, you'll get the flute, our iconic Mars flute mm -hmm. playing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's it for the RFX. And now, um, the puzzle itself. So the, the RFX were really about the place you are in as the player. So like the environment all around you. And the region system is all the, the sounds associated actually with the puzzle. You see they, they are all attenuated depending on the distance. So you hear the tarp flapping in the wind, the antenna here emitting sounds. Some weird generator sounds. The sand hitting on the metal structure of the observatory. Etc. etc. Same here. And as you see, like it's really when you have all those systems together that you get the full the full soundscape. The antenna again, and see. So we have several types of wind. We have the winds in the environment, the howling winds, distant winds, and the ones on the tarp. Yeah. So cool. So cool. Yeah. And that's it. That's it for this puzzle. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, for all of you who have played it, what have you? What are your thoughts about the MDRS so far? If you um, have you, yeah, have you played through the puzzles? Have you listened to the sounds? Uh, did it evoke any sort of emotions in you? Uh, did it inspire sort of a sci-fi, you know, world? Uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear sort of your feedback. Uh, we're we're loving the reviews that people are leaving on the game. I think that's that that's that's our main source of feedback that we're getting from people. And so far, people are just loving the game loving the sounds loving the visuals um but yeah we with every dlc we're we're interested in like trying to push the needle in certain directions um sometimes you know it's uh it, it's you know we like to we know you all like to play let's say monasteries that have insides and outsides but sometimes we change things sometimes it's a kimono sometimes it's a martian colony you know it's so i think that that's we would like to see where we're going to go with this uh, there's a lot of beautiful places around the world that uh, we're interested in interested into turning into puzzles if you have suggestions of course uh, we have a discord channel uh, where you can leave a photo or a suggestion and we'd love to We'd love to take a look because there's we don't know every place in the world and so uh we'd love to hear it um i guess now um unless we have if we have more to show we can also do some q a uh we'll, i'll go through the chat and see if there's uh, some questions that we can answer um i'll start from the first one i'm seeing mr gaff is asking um uh boop, boop, boop. Sorry, asking, Mr. Gaff is asking, can we ask specific questions about the audio or should we avoid spoilers for people who haven't played? Um, I don't know. No. I mean, yeah, let's just do it. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, this is the <laughs> behind the scenes. You're going to get spoiled anyway. So, yeah, yeah let's just say spoiler alert. Uh, alert. Spoiler yeah, alert. Fine. We'll put that at the, at the <laughs> description of the video as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, so like I see a question on the antenna. Mm hmm sounds so i can actually open it even like in unreal so that you see how it's constructed because uh, it's it's never just one sound playing i mean sometimes it's just one sound playing but it's quite rare um it's often a sound is like a, a tiny subsystem with many layers playing uh so can you see my screen yes 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, Azad, can I show some of the stuff in Unreal? Yeah, I guess. Are we okay uh, with that? Hopefully yeah. we don't show all the... Uh, okay, yeah, I'm not seeing anything that they're not supposed to see so far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't spoil the future DLCs just yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, maybe a bit small to see, but see, so from distance, that's that's the antenna. And here's a sound, here's a sound, here are other sounds. So it's not one sound, it's, it's actually uh, three groups of sounds. So there's a sound when you uh, create the antenna for the first time. So this one will only happen when you create it. So when you rejoin the puzzle, it won't play. So it's it's quite a unique sound. Ooh. It's just that. Yeah. Ooh, this and is then, cool. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, these sounds, by the, by the way, are super important because they are really the, the small rewards along the way. So because you don't expect it, but still you, you're holding quite a particular place, uh, piece in your hand and you just put it inside and then you get this small one shot sound like played only once and you're like, ooh, that's that's exciting. Like something just came alive now. So yeah, you have that sound, which I call the, the create sounds in Puzzling Places. Then I will have a, a loop. see uh, which has like a fade in so yeah, it nice. starts slowly yeah and then every now and then I will um, relaunch uh, variations of a sound so so and the, cool. these are yeah, these are randomly re-triggered every yeah, 10 to 45 seconds. So I need to be really careful with how often they are re-triggered because if you spend five hours in the puzzle, you might get just crazy because some sounds repeats over and over. So I'm learning slowly how wh what are the, the correct uh, pacings for that because I think at the beginning I, I tended, but it's not in the release, but before even we released the, the, the game, I tended to have some repetition that were a bit too often because it's the it's the trick like you need to play test this for very long times to mm. be able to tell if it's going to be annoying and also the content some sometimes is just annoying so you need to make sure that your loop for example here is not annoying after 10 minutes of hearing it over and over and over which is nearly impossible with sound but yeah anyway so when i play back everything on top of each other And now, yeah, nice. every 10 seconds, this, this part will just re-trigger and re-trigger. Yeah, now we won't wait because it could take 45 seconds, so yeah. Very cool, very cool. This is also new new to me to see how the, the systems underneath everything are working. Yeah. Um, Mr. Gaff is asking, what audio tools do you use to create these? Um, so, um, so microphones for sure uh, a lot of them different types of microphones some that will record like a acoustic wave like just a regular microphone some will be contact microphone that you put on something like you stick it to a surface and then it will record the object inside uh, some other microphones will record um, frequencies like noise like uh, digital noise or electromagnetic frequencies stuff mm. like that um, and then I use a software that's called Reaper for the like, to put everything together, to to clean the sounds, to put them to the right level, to select my sounds, to listen through different sounds, etc. And then the end puzzle is a mix of my personal library and some commercial libraries, and also libraries that are shared between uh, field recordists. So yeah, it it uh, it can never be only my sounds because we don't have time for that uh, so it's always a mix mm -hmm. but maybe like in the end person places maybe i don't know i would say 33 percent personal recordings yeah. 33 percent uh, commercial recordings yeah. and sometimes as that's recording even 
<laughs> yeah, we had that with Tatev. I think the most. Yeah. In fact, one of the main reasons why Tatev was the the puzzle we picked for the the initial prototype that came out on SideQuest was we had a few we could we could have picked from, but Tatev was the one that we had the ambisonic recordings and all the the little regions, and so like um, that really. I remember like when we first sort of implemented that and, and played it and we we're like, oh my God, this just suddenly like really, it, it felt so right. And uh, and I, of course the mesh and the, the photogrammetry also looked fantastic, but like the sound and the visuals, when you combine them together, it really, it has like a, uh, such a multiplying effect of, 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 of emotion and, and, and theme. So yeah. uh, I think the, the audio has always been a big part of puzzling places, even though it's not something that you would expect for a puzzle game to really have. Uh, um, yeah, we don't really yeah. know how to really talk about it either, like in marketing and whatnot. We're like, it, I don't know. You have to just play it, and you can hear these things. And uh, maybe Pierre, maybe you can talk about the the limitations of the Quest. You know, speakers. They're, they're you're not wearing headphones, right? They're speakers, but like uh, you have to work with that. And somehow you have made yeah. things sound really immersive with that. Did you have to do anything special there? Yeah. Yeah, so so in, it, maybe it's not the right way. I don't know. We'll see on the long term. But in the very beginning, what I was doing, I was using a uh, like big uh, studio professional spe uh, headphones, and and it sounded good and sounded nice on these speakers. But the truth is, I as a sound designer, I was thinking, yeah, it's a quest. So like people who want the full experience, they will just plug in external headphones. But actually, I just notice that even me myself playing puzzling places after an hour i don't want to hear wear headphones like it's just too heavy it's too uncomfortable so i was like okay no my reference speakers for that game are actually the quest speakers there's no way around that so that's the most comfortable way of playing puzzling places so let's just make the mix um sound good on the quest and not on my professional speakers hmm. which just meant that i can't rely on too low frequencies because if i do that uh the speakers start to rattle on the quest. I had that on the menu with some UI sound at some point that had too much bass and it would just go <laughs> in the quest speaker. Same for the Mars wind, the basic ambience. When I put it in the first time, I just had like <laughs> sounds in the in the quest. So yeah, I just can't rely too much on bass. I can't rely too much on high frequencies because they just don't cut through. Mm. And I need to be careful because if I can't hear them on the quest, that doesn't mean that someone that puts in real headphones, yes. real good headphones, will not have them super loud. So yeah, that's I, I have to be aware of the limitations and just play around with that and make sure that my core sounds, the most important ones, are within the frequency range, the frequency response of the quest. Right. And then it's a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I know that as a, there's a, like a, a bell you really like in the, like a, a, a church bell yeah. you hear outside in the Hull Wheel pack. And yeah, it's a lot of back and forth and trying to filter the color so that it, it feels like it's not coming from the quest anymore, just in the room. Um, and there's no difference between what you would hear in, in the room you're playing Puzzling Places and, and Puzzling Places itself. So yeah, it's just a lot of back and forth and it's trying to match the color. Yeah, a mm. lot. <laughs> yeah, it, there's, uh, I mean, it, let us know if you've also experienced this, but like there's quite a few puzzles where the ambient sounds really sound like they're coming from outside. And so, yeah, the bells are one of the clear ones that feel like that. The other one is the Kushiyaki restaurant. Uh, the, the rain in that really is, is incredibly immersive. Um, it's just playing around you. And, and it's if you're sitting in a room, it sounds like it's right outside. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and see for 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 the the Japanese restaurant, it's it's like with every other puzzle, I'm trying to really wrap the player the most possible. So, but when you say when I mean wrapping it, wrapping the player, it's not just putting sounds around them. It's so you have to put sounds around them, but it's not enough for them to feel engaged. So the engagements come from actually what they do in the puzzle. They, they are playing with these pieces. So sounds has to come also from the pieces. So for the Japanese restaurant, you have like a, a stereo headlock. So it, meaning like mm -hmm. if you turn your head, it doesn't turn. It's just there, like like listening to music, ba basically. So you have that rain, very light rain, distant rain on the sidewalk. And then when you zoom in on the puzzle, you have all those tiny spots with different types of rain on metal, rain on mm -hmm. plastic tarp. Rain, uh, rain on the on the street pavement, rain in the gutter, etc., etc. That feel you like like you're you're there, you're wrapped in that environment. Totally. 
Um, and Mr. Gaff, I mean, there's there the the, the audio is also things that we've updated some of the audio as well. Like we found some bugs in the in the past, and so if, if there are parts of it that aren't uh, as enjoyable, so we, we've done a couple of things. One thing is there are sliders that we've implemented from the beta to the full game. Um, and just for context, Mr. Gaff is was saying that some of the sounds and, and, and some of the vocal sounds and like architectural puzzles can be a bit intrusive over time. I guess especially with maybe with bigger puzzles. Um, and so if you want to really change how, how things sound, you can go into the sliders and turn down like tonal sounds or like SFX sounds. Uh, so we have given people the control to be able to do that. Uh, there's also people that have always asked like, can we play our music? Um, although I don't think you can play it through the quest itself, but being able to adjust the sliders, you can play music, you know, through in the in the room. Um, so yeah, please let us know if there's more feedback about the audio. Of course, we're always uh, happy to hear it, and if there's something that's that's actually wrong, uh, we're we're open to fixing things as well. Uh, as you can tell, it's quite a complicated system, and so um, yeah, we'd love to. Uh, we we always can use feedback. Um, yeah, and I mm -hmm. see like Mr. Graf commenting about the the voice sounds. I guess it's in the Halwil puzzle. Yeah, um, and and it's that's that's the problem with puzzling places. I'm just because like I, I can't deliver four hours of continuous playback sounds. Uh, it, it's like in terms of memory, in terms of how much time we would need to actually create them, it's impossible. So, if you put all the sounds from one puzzle together next to each other, maybe you end up with three minutes of sounds five minutes to the max if we have like a song like a in the armenia puzzle then it's a bit longer but if you just put it back to back it's maybe three or four minutes and then it's a matter of trying to maintain the illusion of something that's alive and not repetitive the longest but there's a limit to it like after 40 minutes for sure you you will have heard everything over and over again. Yep. So there's a maximum limit. We could, with more time and more sounds, push back a bit that limit of, okay, now I heard it all over again. It's, But I don't really have a control over that because some people will just play the 400 pieces in one run. And I can't put myself into this, the, 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 at the place of these people because they, I, I would just go crazy with my own sounds because yeah. I, like after an hour I'm like I'm done I, I had enough, so yeah with like the the repetition rates the content itself we shouldn't have any like um, patterns you can recognize too much and maybe the voice is actually one we are more sensible to so I know more people have been complaining about the voice than other sounds because it's a voice so it talks to us, so yeah I, I'm also learning how, what. It's a bit more risky in terms of uh, content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to put this out there. If you're interested in us doing this again with, but with um, other puzzles, so I, I'm I'm imagining we will probably do similar things with future DLCs, especially if there is content to show there. Like if uh, not everything is of course scan scanned by us, but the ones that are, well, you know, we might be able to show you time lapses and the photogrammetry processing and whatnot. But uh, of course, there's also all the puzzles that were included in the. The game itself that we haven't really gone very deep we haven't really shown any behind the scenes of beyond the the blog post that we wrote about them um so if you're interested in seeing uh, you know the behind the scenes of the armenia stuff the the howell museum scans um you know we can even invite the uh the the people from the the swedish museum that scanned the howell museum um into discord and like we have an interview let us know in the comments like we'd love to uh, we'd love to hear it um but yeah like this is uh this is Will help us craft the dev chats into what you want it to be, and we're always interested in sharing more about the game. So, uh, please give us feedback. Um, in the final few minutes left, uh, yeah, let us know if you have any more questions. We'll take the last few questions. Um, let's see. The uh, blind Zelda is asking: Would it also be possible in the future to go up and down? Also, I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> I Maybe audio-wise, go forward and backwards so with the the body, I guess. I mean, you can you can already locomote. You know, you can hold down the B and Y or the grip buttons, and you can move forward. Oh, up and down. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like uh, yeah. like ascend and descend. No, blind Zelda, your your English is just fine. Um, that is something that's been asked before. Uh, I don't think we have an answer to that to give you today. 
but it's certainly possible. We just have to uh, we have to see how much of a priority it is to, to add. So yeah, there's quite a few things that we'd like to do with only so many people and limited resources. We always have to prioritize, and so uh, depending on where something falls, uh, it, it's it's we have priorities based on that. So if it is really a big deal for you, you know, let us know. Please let us know in the in a game feedback channel. Uh, we're always listening. We're listening to our or players and if there's something that really a lot of people are, are saying then we we do take it more seriously and so uh if there's something you're really passionate about like uh, make your voice heard and so yes um let's see more questions uh boop, 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 boop. did you by the way to our uh, players did you like the custom colors of the puzzles so that's one new addition we made is like each puzzle has its own custom color that it loads in uh did you play it with that color did you go back to the original one uh did it feel also special being you know on mars in a much more red orange sort of brownish world um did it did it work for you i'd love to hear more uh, mr gaff is also asking if you do most of your mixing in unreal um yeah well i guess so. i don't know no. it yeah kind of like like f real time mixing always happen in the game and i'm only dealing with weird very close up very loud sounds before that and i'm just making a lot of them with a lot of variations and then the magic really happens in unreal where i decide the attenuation curve maybe i filter the high I put them into some real-time reverb too. So yeah, the, the mixing happens in, in Unreal. Also, we have like options, for example, for the end effect where they will just get filtered so that you just can focus on the last three pieces. Uh, yeah, a lot happens in Unreal. <laughs> I can't judge a sound before it's in Unreal right. and mix in Unreal, yeah. Right. And often I will have a sound, I think it's perfect. I put it in Unreal and it just sounds like shit. Because <laughs> yeah, the game with, will just yeah. Same with the puzzles in photogrammetry. Like uh, sometimes we have a really awesome scan of a place, and then the next step is to kind of cut it and to create the crop. And you create a beautiful crop, and then you're like, oh, this looks so great to look at. And then when you turn it into a puzzle, and then you're looking at the pieces, you're like, actually, there's way too so many few pieces are the subject itself, and there's too many pieces that are you know dedicated to their surrounding, and then it becomes very difficult. Yeah. So it's a constant back and forth of of like uh, what you think would be cool, doing it, play testing it, and seeing how see how it comes out. Yeah, and I would even say like if 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 mixing is the art of making something great like feel great be it visually or in terms of sound i think mixing happens in vr because vr in itself is like when you look at it on the screen or on sketchfab or when you listen it on headphones and then you put into that unique perspective of vr it, it's totally different and that's the only place where you can judge the quality of whatever you produced and yeah. it, it 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 shows you stuff that you hadn't seen before you each you can hear stuff that i couldn't hear before just because i'm in vr now and that my whole body at my scale is now into a new perspective so yeah the mixing happens in vr <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, i think that's a great place to end it thank you all for being here and to asking a question and listening to us uh of course you can catch the replay on youtube hopefully i'll get it up over the next couple of days um if you have more questions and suggestions uh please put them in our uh one of the discord channels one of the appropriate ones and uh yeah happy puzzling thank you all for for buying and downloading the mdrs pack it's the first of many hopefully and uh we're excited to make more um thanks pierre marie for for giving us insight into your work yeah thanks Azad, for invi inviting me yeah, yeah of course all right and uh we'll see you guys next time bye